Okay, it's April 6th today and I finally found my inspiration, my motivation to get this done. I was feeling a little nervous about it, so I decided to wait a few more days. All I need to do, I'm gonna finish the base first and because you know, the stone does still fit in there, but could use a flake to dull it down. Now, I don't want to get too close to the points of these ears, you know, I don't want to make it too, make them too sharp. Just want to get that classic Dalton concavity going. Gotta be careful how I hold it. Maybe I can try to get a larger one here. That was better. Came up a little farther. Nice one. That helped a lot actually. 
I was developing kind of a high ridge there that got rid of a lot of it very nicely. And I said I didn't want to make the ears too sharp, and then I went went ahead and made them too sharp. Don't really need them to be that sharp. I can bring in the sides a little more too, I think. Which I'm just gonna use an old or a bite face, an unfinished bite face that I was working on but never got around to finishing. So a little less dangerous than using the, the you know the my hammer stone. Grind it down. Always run the risk of taking off the ears or something.
There it goes. I think, I don't know, I think that's enough fiddling around with the base. Good enough. I'll just softly abrade down the edges, you know, the tip, tips of these ears and the edges here. You know, this is the part that would be going into the haft anyways, so it would have been ground generally. You know, I was gonna say I can take off one flake there, but I'm not gonna risk it. Oh, you can't even see that. I don't wanna risk that. find the way it is. So now I'll give my pressure flaker a nice abrade, sharpen it up real good, and then I'm just going to abrade uh, all the edges. I'm not going to shape them further shape the platforms to sharpen the point and do the serrations. I need a real fine point on my pressure flaker, a fine blunted point anyways. Okay, that's good. That's what it looks like now. And that's what it looks like after. I think that'll work really good. Okay. So, I think for this edge, it makes sense to go this way. And for this edge, it makes sense to go that way. So I'll be able to do this properly. I'm only going to abrade up till here. This is pretty sharp actually, this tip. I think that I can leave as the finished tip unless I need to shape it just a tiny bit after I do the serrations, but the serrations will start here and go down to around here probably. So, I'm just going to do this, like I said, I'm not going to shape these edges anymore. Just give them a nice abrade so that it'll handle the, you know, the pressure flake. be abraded down here anyways. And then I'll flip it over and do the same thing here.
Okay. Moment of truth. Nice. Okay, time to finish this piece. Shaking a little. It's been a long journey, this one. Longer than it should have been. Made a lot of mistakes all the way through it. So I'm just going to be gentle with these flakes. I'm not going to try and drive them too deep and make a super nice, you know, flaking pattern, but just enough to do the serrating and the shaping. So... And then if there's a tiny little overhang, I can take that like that. And then I'll go over. I'm not going to try and make them too close together. But I think I can take one here. further over and just nibble away towards it. And I just want to leave a... That's off camera, isn't it? I just want to leave... <laughs> a nice sharp edge there. I think I finally managed to do it, but it's not a good start. Let's get a better one here. Okay. I won't worry about cleaning that one up yet. Now I'll come in. Come on. Too much. Slightly better rhythm I'm getting into here. Sometimes 
like with that last one get it so close that it comes to that point naturally that's what I'm trying to do and failing on most of them that was okay and then I'm gonna need an even finer point on my pressure flaker to come in between those just make that a little deeper. Can even kind of braid in between each flake I took. Strengthen that edge just a little bit to take these little kind of hook hook flakes off the other the other face. And then I can always do a little bit of final sharpening of the serrations after, after I take that, that round of flakes off. Okay, I'll just upgrade that a little more. Just a little bit. Yeah, so now I'll come back the other, this way here. Try and match it up as much as I can. And keep this on camera. I think these ones are a little closer together on the other side. I should try and balance it out a little bit more.
Okay. That's it for the first round. I'm going to need this to come to a really fine point. Okay. Just had to do a bit of fine abrading there. Uh, actually. Get that a little sharper. Hopefully that's enough. Okay. Let's start with the bad edge. Hmm. 
happy with that. Quite sharp. Small little sharpen. Ooh, okay. I can breathe properly and talk again. Well, the serrations, you know, they're not even on both sides. I think there's more on this side than there are here, but they are all very sharp. Even the tip is sharp. That right there is a 100% killing machine, that's for sure. You could half that up and put that right through a bison, I think. Maybe even a woolly mammoth if you find one. At least a giant ground sloth. Anyways. That right there is a finished giveaway piece. Whew. Can't believe I finally got there. This really pointy tip on my antler pressure flaker worked really well. 
allowed me to really get in there and create those fine serrations and get that really sharp. Maybe I can zoom in when I edit the video here. But quite happy. You know, a couple of them aren't as sharp as they could be, but, you know, whoever the winner is or will be, I don't know what kind of stuff you do, but I highly doubt this piece will ever be used to actually hunt anything. It'd be pretty cool if it did, but if it just ends up on somebody's shelf somewhere for the rest of their life, that'd be really cool too. Okay. I'm gonna call that one done for now. This is what, part 13, I think, of the series? Maybe 12? No, I think 13. Finally finished, probably about seven hours later. I'm super happy with this piece. So that's the giveaway piece. Here's the other previous best Dalton I had ever made. I was super happy with this one at the time, but now I know it's a little too chunky, a little too thick and, you know, wide here. This is a much narrower piece. Even with that mistake in there, I think it kind of adds a little bit of weird character to the final piece, and somehow I managed to not split the thing in half along the way. And finally, last but certainly not least, there's the Ryan Gill point. The Dalton he killed a bison with. I think, you know, I made my ears a little too sharp, especially this one. Could have round, rounded them off a little bit more. And I could have made that base a little more concave. But I think overall, you know, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Of course, mine's longer. This one represents a very well curated Dalton point. You know, it was based on one found in the archaeological record. Still have this out here. It was found in the Midwest. Um, it was hafted to a sparkleberry foreshaft on the end of a giant river cane atlatl shaft. Okay, this, yeah, Ryan, Ryan Gills was. I guess that's all the info. Just that it was found in the Midwest. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, that's enough blathering on. This video is done. There's just one more video to go, one more part. I think that'll be part 14. It'll just be a quick one. The giveaway winner announcement video. I'll get everybody's names written on their individual flake that I'll pull from down here somewhere. I'll have to go do a final tally of all the, all the entries, but I think there's about 20 so far. Chuck Learns Lithics, there's a shout out for you. Graciously told me to not put his name in the hat. He's happy to let somebody else win the prize. I know he does a bunch of napping, so that's pretty cool of him. Anyways, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.